la ilaha illallah Ashhadu la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah Hay ala salah Hay ala salah Hay ala salah Hay ala The law commands justice, the doing of good, and liberality to kith and kin. He forbids all shameful deeds and rebellion, and he instructs you that you may receive admonition. Sadra Hulil Islam. <clears throat> Those whom Allah and His plan will it to guide, He opens their breasts to Islam. Ya Ayuha Aladina Manu Wataqula Haka to Katihi Wala Tamutuna Ila Wa Antum Muslimun. Oh you believe, fear Allah, as he should be feared and do not die except in a state of Islam. Wa atasimu bi hablilahi jamiyan wa la tafaraku and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out to you and be not divided. Kuntum kaira umatin ukrijat lil nasi tamaruna bil marufi wa tanhauna nil munkar wa tukminuna billah. You are the best of peoples, evolved for mankind, enjoining what is right, forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. Fa inna astikal hadith kitabullah, wa autaka alura kalimatu taqwa, wa khairul milali milatu Ibrahim, wa khairul sunani sunatu Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa salam. Wa ashraful hadith dhikrullah. Wa asanu al kasasi had al Quran. Wa khairul umuri awazimuha. Wa shairul umuri muktata tuha. Wa asanu al hadyu hadyu al anbiya. Wa ashraful maut katlu shuhada. The most truthful of discourses is Kitabullah. The most trustworthy word is Taqwa, or fear of Allah. The best of the community is the community of Prophet Ibrahim. The best way of life is the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The remembrance of Allah is the most glorious of all things. The best of all narrations is Quran. The best acts are those requiring the highest degree of will and determination. The worst acts are those based on innovation. The best way of life is the one adopted by the Prophet Allah. The most glorious death is the death of the martyr. Akula kali hadha wa astaghfirullah li walakum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Today I'd like to do a little something. Uh, it uh, comes from hypnotherapy. Uh, you know, hypnotherapy is uh, like, you know, it's, uh, uh, I, I had a friend, uh, it's 30 something years, hey, I think it's a little more like 40 years ago. He was a hypnotherapist. And uh, he used to talk about things like, uh, he used to say, just see yourself on an elevator and you're going down and you're getting deeper and deeper and see yourself on a velvet carpet and it's purple and it's going down and you're getting deeper and deeper. So it was a couple of guys sitting up in the front uh, and uh, I said, man, look like those guys, uh, they, they was ready to go. He said, yeah, they wanted to be hypnotized. I said, well, what about me and Diamond? He said, you guys didn't want to be hypnotized. You can't help nobody. You can't do that to him. Don't nobody want, you know. So the whole idea was, is about choice choice. And what we're dealing with right now is choice. And when you look at the world, I was just looking at a thing on the Civil War. The, the death is just un unbelievable. You know, just the, the death rate. I think it was 675,000 people killed in the Civil War. The Civil War was the most deadliest war America ever had. By a long shot, it was 58,000 died in Vietnam. That ain't nothing compared to. So then when we look at our own life, this choice we make is between uh, a so-called real world, the world that we live in every day, the world that we <clears throat> exist in, <clears throat> the world that we travel in, and the world that we study in, and, the, and the, actually the, the, the technical world that we live in. That is a real world. But at the same time, there's a world of potential. There's a world of possibility. And everybody has to make a choice. Everybody have to make that choice. What world do you want to live in? Now, this one world has a maybe two or three percent chance of happening. Two or three percent, I mean, you know, that's not bad. And the other world is a world of corruption and day-to-day -day activity and uh, 60, 70, 80 percent corrupt, you know what I mean, that type of world. The world that we live in today is a corrupt situation. It's a world that it has probably a small chance of continuing to exist as it is. This world that we live in has a very small chance. One group uh, <laughs> In Bali, they, they picked up two million uh, pounds of uh, two million pounds of plastic from the ocean. And it's just Bali. They're just two white boys, and they started, and then they got armbands and everything. We have a choice of that world where people improve, they get better, and we have a choice of this world right here that we're living in. And everybody's responsible for their choice. Everybody is responsible for their choice. 
So that's, the, that's what's happening as far as, as the world is concerned. And when you watch all of these wars and civil wars and World War I and World War II, I mean, they be knocking over 60 and 70, 80 million people. You see what I mean? They be knocking over 70 and 80 million people. 50 million in World War I, 70, 80 million in World War II. I mean, the numbers are staggering. And you have to figure out which one of these worlds you're going to live in. Each one of us have to figure out which world do we want to live in. Do we want to live in the world of potential, of possibility? Do we want to live in that world? Or which world do we want to live in? That's our choice. Not only is our choice, but it's our chance. Now, those of us who are alive now, who experience the, the horror, the chance taking of this world, are lucky. We're very lucky. I mean, One politician said uh, about Vietnam, he said he did certain things because he, he felt lucky to get back from Vietnam alive. So he so-called dedicated his life to shenanigans, of course, but he so-called <coughs> dedicated his life To making the world a better place. Well, he did for him. But for you and I now, we have a choice. And that choice is going to determine whether we participate in making this world in which we live a better place or whether we cooperate with the one that we have already. <clears throat> That's the way that is. We have a choice today of whether we cooperate with the world that we have today. That means we participate in the system. Or we go out to change that world in which we live. Now, the chances of, uh, of survival in the world as we have it today are very small. They're small because <laughs> it can't go on but so long, the world that we have today. Or it could change to evolution, uh, revolution, all kind of things. But the chances are small. It is a conscious decision that each and every person have to make a decision now about the world in which they live. <clears throat> we know about World War I and World War II and about the useless murder and killing and of peoples. We also know about the philosophy of death, the philosophy of of uh, incorporating in, into your behavior a philosophy of selling people out. Selling people out. That means that that's my goal. That's my goal is to, for me. Number one, I'm going to survive. And I'm going to sell anybody out that comes my way. I don't care who it is. I can love them. I can like them. It don't make me no difference though. All right. At the same time, we may have a, po uh, a, 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 a policy of kindness, humor, and optimism. Kindness is a Quranic environmental reality. 
Humor is a social reality. Optimism is a way of thinking and being. <clears throat> Optimism is when you can look at a situation and say, hey man, I don't know when I had my little thing here a little while back, they still come back in a minute or two, but I have optimism. And that's what I told the brother, <clears throat> so don't worry about nothing. Optimism. Optimism. He said, whatever they did, they blew this one. They blew this one 1,000%. They just blew it, that's all. And I'll explain it in a minute. Humor is something that if you lose, especially African Americans, and you don't have humor, the other side wins all the time. So when you get out in this world that I'm talking about now, you have to have fun. You have to say, man, hey, whatever happens, I'm going to have fun, but I'm not going to blow my shot at the same time. I am not going to blow my shot. That means I am not going to be one of those people that say I wish I would have a long time ago, or I could have been a contender, or any, any of those statements. The other thing is about expectations. What do I expect of the world? What do I expect? The other thing is expectations have a lot to do with control over your reality. What do you expect out of life? Do you know usually you wind up getting just about what you expect? You didn't know that, did you? you? You wind up getting about, just about, I'm talking about the back of your mind, the bottom of your mind, your inner heart, your real self, you usually wind up getting what you expect out of life. So why not expect the best? Why not expect unlimited possibilities? Right? How, why not look into yourself and try to visualize what book you want to read, write it then. The book you want to read, why not write that book? Right? And, and write in that book every good thing, every hopeful thing, every optimistic thing that you can think of. Because those expectations, what you expect out of life, will control your destiny. Another thing we want to talk about is nonviolent resistance. Alternative resistance. What, what is it the possible? What possibility or what what are you doing? Nonviolent resistance. Alternative resistance. That means the churches, the mosques, the synagogue, all of those institutions will and should replace government. They should, and if it goes our way, they will replace the government because the government cannot do it. The changes that are needed, the government will not. They cannot do it. They can't stop lying. They can't stop invasion. They, it's not possible. Well, I mean, you don't want to say it's impossible. But they, under their present thinking, they cannot do it. It's always another rabbit in the head. It's always something in there to get to grab. Right? Therefore, they can't do it. So nonviolent resistance is not passive resistance. 
is active resistance, is alternative resistance. And that's only one aspect of it. When we talk about Oakland, we have to think about a spiritual jihad in Oakland. And here, why a spiritual jihad? Spiritual jihad means out of various types of jihads, spiritual jihad means that you are technically using something that the enemy has no knowledge of. <laughs> he does not have any knowledge of spirituality. He cannot implement spiritualism. Why? Because he is a technocrat, a sociocrat. He's all of those things, but he cannot, he will not practice spiritual job. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to need <laughs> spiritual job. You're going to need something that is above and it is beyond their ability to act on. And the name of that is spiritual job. Why? Because they ain't got no, they don't know what to do. The next thing, Sabakun Liberation Organization and Sabakun Liberation Movement. Those are big names. Sabakun Liberation Organization. Can you do it? Is it possible? Of course it is. Is it unlikely? Of course it is. Right? Sabakun Liberation Movement is a possibility. But it's like a seed. It haven't yet become yet. It's not here. It's like planting a seed in the ground. You don't yet have the, 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 the becoming aspect of this seed. You can't prove it, in other words. You cannot prove, right, that that seed can become a tomato or avocado or what have you. You can't prove it yet. Why? Because it hasn't broken ground yet. It has not broken ground yet. <clears throat> the other thing is junkyardism. Junkyardism. If you look around here, you see ladders and all of that. That's junkyardism. All of this stuff. It's pretending downstairs, you look down there, it's pretending, there's big uh, pretense going on. Hell, that, ain't, that stuff ain't nothing. It don't take 10 minutes to do this stuff. The guy outside has a yellow blue car, has a car over there, has a truck, forget about the truck, has a black car over there, and the other thing is, there's a van out there. And that van is a Dodge van. Do you know that Dodge van worked like, I don't know what, but all they gotta do is go in the van and disconnect things and that's it. Have brand new tires on it <laughs> and everything. You know when they, you put two new tires on a van, you, you can imagine if you have history <laughs> that it's gonna up and <laughs> disappear. Why? Because it's a van and it works perfect. You crank that boy up, and they came in and they pull it apart. Why? Because they didn't stole four or five vans. Now they steal them from me. They stole a white van, they stole, right? That's what they do. You gotta remember, 
All of this happens to me, M-E, me. The stuff don't happen to nobody else. You gotta get that under your hat. This stuff happens to nobody else. But Imam Musa, anything happens to Imam Musa is fine. You can bust him upside the head, right? That's fine. You can take him to court, that's fine. You can stop him on the highway, anytime you want. They can stop you and they can give you, this last time, eye examinations with the with, uh, plain clothes, that means the doctor, telling the guy what to do. Splash the light in his eyes. That's what they're doing. They're giving me last month. They're giving me an examination on the highway to see how far along this head busting and went. You see what I'm saying? This happens all the time. Each and every, I cannot go to California, I can't go nowhere without getting stopped. Now they can't, they're not going to stop me and like stop you. They're going to let me go. And I ain't got no driver's license. I ain't got no insurance. I ain't got none of that. But why they won't do it? Because they took my driver's license <clears throat> illegally out in this county out here. They took them illegally. And they know I'll take them to court and say, prove the fruit of a poisonous tree. Prove it. I'm going to take them all the way back. Prove, right? Because the way they did it. It's simple. It's very simple. They said, well, you didn't show up. Huh? Sure, I'm not going to show up because, hell, I don't know you're having no trial. <laughs> right? <laughs> you see what I mean? I know you're not, I don't have any idea whether you're having a trial. So if I go back 10 or 12, 15, God Almighty, now it's 15 years or more. Right? But I'm not going to get stopped. I have been, let me see how many times, twice last time in Colorado, zoop, pulled me over. Right? And it's uh, like, hey, uh, you you did this, that, other, of course I didn't do it. But don't worry. We want you to just park yourself right here on the highway and wait till somebody come pick you up. That's insane. You know I ain't gonna wait on no highway for nobody to come pick me up in Colorado, right? I'm going to wait till he go down the street and drive off. And he knows it. Right? In Texas or Kansas. Uh, well, uh, you don't have this or that. But I'm just going to turn my head and go. This is what they, they tell me this stuff. They tell me this stuff all the time. In Arizona last time, oh, well, it's Christmas, so I'm just going to uh, uh, let you go. And all the time, they never, never have held me up on the highway. Now they might start doing it now. So I, I don't care. Because they got something that they want to do. We're going to get to that in a minute. Junkyardism. Everything out there in that, all the roofs covered around here, you look at them, what do they do? They look like hell. They look like hell. H-E-double-L. -L. Hell. With all that junk on the roof. The junk is junk. J-U-N-K. Junk. On the roofs around here. That's why we can transform, 
transition, we can transcend. Today, we're going to have to begin to make some psychological changes. Now, remember, I, I talked about hypnotism and therapy at first. Now, when I finish talking, I'm going to snap my finger and you are not supposed to forget what I said. Which I just do, you know. And so all of this junkyardism and ah, you just forget that. I mean, of course you won't, but you'll forget it, inshallah. Marzia Hashemi. Y'all know who she is? Marzia Hashemi. I'm not going to talk about her because I am a firm supporter of her. She was married to an Iranian. The Iranian up to died. That ain't no big deal. Let me repeat that again. <laughs> the Iranian up to died. You know what they say? They found out who she was. And he up and died. It was a while back. That might mean that the team she's on, which we don't believe she's on that team, of course, because we believe in dear Marzia Hashemi. We love her and we support her. property in Oakland and here belongs to us. The property in Oakland and here belongs to us. We own it. If I tell somebody two, three years ago, sell that property and they sell it, Something is smelling. Let me go over that again. Remember, you're supposed to forget this. If I say in 2016 or 50, yes, sell some of the property in Oakland, and all of a sudden a deed pops up and they sold it. They don't have a right to sell it, they don't have a right to do nothing in Oakland. They don't have a right to do literally nothing in Oakland. That's the trap. Do you know how much information we have on Oakland alone? Do you know what rights Mukhtar and Khadija have in Oakland? Absolutely none. None. They don't have no right to do nothing in Oakland. Do you know that in October, I recertified, I recertified in October all of my paperwork, every last drop of it. But now you'd have to check to figure out whether, you know, I did in, in, in uh, December uh, or November, I had a little incident, so maybe they uh, right. Oakland, you got Oakland, think about Oakland, you got Oakland and you're turning in something, uh, what's your number? So, they said, so Oakland can do anything. They can say, uh, this man is here in Oakland trying to use a DC thing. They can do that. Or people can forget. They can say, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. That's what they can say. But I have certified this stuff, both of them, SNAP, everything, certified. That's the way it is. It's all, <laughs> it's all written down there. It's all written down. So now the only time that stuff, you gotta remember now, everything happens to me. You, can't forget that. Everything happens to me. And it's been like that.
You know what they did? On November the 4th, they knocked some sense into my head. I said, what? I said, they knocked some sense into my head. They brought it home to me that you under 24 7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what you have. And it's out in the open. Everybody knows it. Everything I'm saying here, it ain't no mystery to nobody. But it's, if it's not no mystery, what choice will we make? How many people are going to make the choice that they're going to expect certain things to happen? Those expectations are almost impossible to reach. They're almost impossible. Boy, but it's really a good thing to work for, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, it's a big deal. So they knocked some sense into my head. Yeah, you know what it says? I ain't gonna blow my shot. That's from Hamilton. I am not going to give them one more chance at anything. Nothing. Like right now, if you watch my CDs, they, they swole up. See what I mean? Now I go to the hospital and I say, give me a shot. They say, well, you have to stay in the house. I say, I don't want no shot. I want, I mean, I don't want to stay in the hospital. I just got out of the crazy house. Right? Now, whatever they did in the hospital, boy, they hooked me up. I think they was trying to fool me. I think they was trying to make, make me think that they did something psychologically. Right? But I thought, I think this, they was trying to fool the big company. You know why? The way I feel now and the focus I have now, hey, it's not possible back in the old days. You know when the old days was? Last month. Do you know what everything was written last month? Was all arranged. <laughs> Strategic management under conditions of repression. I know what the hell they looking for, right? You think I'm going to write some <laughs> oh, book after book? You notice after the first go round, after we write these certain articles, you don't have no more of those. Think about it. That was innocent life. Now, what are you going to do, dear brother? You're going to come right up on it. 5% away, strategic management under conditions of repression. St strategic positioning, strategic this, strategic that. And they're going to act off that. They're going to act off that, dear friends. And you know what? Finally, they're going to come to the conclusion that we have to stop this nigga. Yes, we do. That's, that's the whole idea. But it ain't, didn't work. I don't care what you think, y'all looking all funny. I don't care what you think. All I know is this. I know, dear believers, that we 
can change the world in which we live in. And I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. Now, remember we were talking about choice before? That's my choice. That's my choice. You know what? I don't care. I'm 74. Yeah, I'll be 74 in a minute. What the hell are they going to do to me? They got people who die at 21. They got people who die at 17. Right? Huh? Think about it. I'll be 74 on that, this month. This is February, right? A few more days, I will be 74 years old. What the hell I got reason to be uh, cautious about? Why do I have a reason to be cautious? I am not going to blow my shot. I'm going down all the way. And guess what? They changing, not me. Whatever it is, the change, I am not changing. They changing. I repeat it. I, Imam Musa, am not changing nothing. I am not compromising nothing at all. If you're talking about a gorilla on the loose, <laughs> hey man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've been telling brothers all the, the whole week, I'm sorry. I, there's nothing I can do. I am not going to go for the stuff that they've been doing all of this time. I'm just not doing it. It's my choice. Total disregard for civil and human rights. As long as it happened to Musa, it's okay. Whatever they do in the court in Oakland, they're gonna have to work for that now. Because I'm not getting no rest. Whatever the people do out there, of course, I, I overlook them, remember? Kindness, forgiveness, optimism. That's where we actually coming from. But my choice for this is, hey, whatever that happened, man, I got I to gotta look at it, dear believers. I got to look at that. Mm -mm, I'm sorry. I cannot go against the historical, it's been going on a long time. I can't go against the historical policy that's been developed. I cannot go against the historical reality, 50 years minimum, right, of this struggle. I can't go against that. I can't compromise that. Now remember, I, I'm going to just snap my fingers and y'all going to forget all this stuff that I'm saying, so don't you worry. There's a good side of history, and that good side is a rare side. Uh, it's generally not possible. It's generally not possible for the uh, Hell, the good people, the nice guys always lose. That's just right. You get in the system, you make that damn thing work. Right? You find you a spot. Right? That works for you. And they'll put you in contact with everybody like you, which is 95% of the people. 95% of the people is like, that's what they like. They want a safe-ass job. That's exactly what they want. They want it safe and they want it secure. And you got to be different. They always show the guy the bull or something that's going out by itself. But they don't practice that stuff. You go in them offices, they got them fish-eyed shoes on, they got all that stuff, right? Same car, same everything. 
Huh? They all believe in the same everything. That's them. But what about your choice? Most of us are kind of moving along in life. What about our choice? What's happening with just giving it a shot every now and then? Now remember, I didn't talk this talk all the time, you know, for decades now. We've been talking this talk. You gotta have a snitches union, you gotta have this, that, and I don't know if y'all remember that. Talatea union, you know, you're not getting enough money for what you're doing, you know, which you're not. Don't you worry, you ain't getting no money. Family, the family ain't getting a dime, hardly. My family. How can they get the whole damn family? Right? How can they get Sister Bahia down here? And she was with Abdul Malik. Y'all remember that, right? Abdul Malik in Oakland. Sister Bahia. You know, the first time I got my legs rolled up 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I got married and all of a sudden, shoot, I was getting these. <laughs> but you stick with it. Number one, people deserve a chance. Now that's a long, lot of chances to take. To sit there and watch stuff happen over and over and over and over and over and over again. You talk about patience, I got it. I got patience. That's why I'm at where I'm at now. Patience. We got the white man where we want him. He ain't got us nowhere. Now, Imam Jamil said the same thing, but uh, it might be a little different. I'm trying to tell you is, with what we feel right now, we got that boy where we want him. That's where we got it. That's where we got the system. We got the system there because there is nothing they can do to you anymore. It's called kiss my behind, cracker. That's what, that's what it means, kiss my behind, cracker. What you gonna do? <laughs> what you gonna do? You can't do nothing. You got to understand that you, when you come to the conclusion that there is nothing the system can do to you, finished. It's all over. It's all over. That's where we are now. That's exactly where we are now. You got a choice to make. Other people got choices to make. Half of you are damn near old as I am. Why not give it a shot? Well, the white man will do this, the white man will do that. The white man is damn near. Do you see the White House? Do you see them crackpots? How much longer can that last? You, you giving them people the run of your life? They running your life right now. If they say no paycheck, no paycheck. That's it. If they say seashells is the new money, seashells is the new money. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it <clears throat> unless you take charge of your own life. It ain't fun at first. Now, my life, I didn't got through all of this and it's fun. For the last 35 years, so 30 years, that, it's been fun. Because I put it fun. You got to have fun. 
right? Now, I don't sound like I'm having fun now, but remember, I snapped my finger, and you don't forget what I said. That's hypnotherapy, and we're back to fun again. But there's a little bit of seriousness in all of this, is when you arrange your life, when you pre-plan your life, when you organize your life on such a level that it is so detailed that you can deal as close as five and seven and eight percent of what you're saying, it, it, all of it is real. All of it is real. <laughs> but you can cut it right down to the minute. I'm trying to tell you what's going on. Now, the good side of history. You have to write the book that you want to read. It hasn't been written yet. You got to put in there who you want in there and how, what you want to happen. You don't believe it's possible, do you? That's because you don't try. That's all. You just don't try. You just cruise around in this damn everyday life, cooperating with the white man. Yeah, cooperating with him, collaborating with him. It's unbelievable. For nothing. Absolutely nothing. And just imagine if so happens a certain percentage of the people begin to change, begin to improve. Do you know? We're on the good side now. You know why? Because there's people in the world, there's people in the world right now to seeing things different. There's people in the world that's, that's changing. There's people in the world who have already changed. There's people in the world right now who are already where we are now, right this minute. There are people in the world who are in the process of evolution. There are people in the world who do not like the world the way it is and they are visualizing a whole new world. They are doing it right now. And here we are, collaborating with the old world, cooperating with the old world, adjusting to the old world. So, the Quran is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you from areas, from avenues you don't even know about. And when it talks about your ride and your transition, each event in life takes you to another place. Each event in life takes you to a higher place, right? And, and, and it gives you two eyes, two ears, but it talks about the uphill road. Who wants to take the uphill road? I'm asking the question, who wants to take the uphill road? The uphill road deals with people who are faced down in the dust. Face down in the dust. That means you got to have compassion. Yeah, you got to have compassion. You know why you got to have compassion? It's because God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that gave you something extra. You're not dead. You're lucky. You're up in your 70s. Why not be grateful? I'm thankful to Allah for that, a minimum of that. It's not only that, it's everything that goes with it. 
Can you imagine? I'm not bragging, but we have eight pieces of property here in D.C. Who the hell has eight pieces of property in D.C.? Nobody has no eight pieces. They got four or five properties in California. They can mess around with it, but they can't do nothing. They can say, uh, da -da 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 -da. bull crap. Bull crap. We, we're not going for that anymore. They can say anything they want. What does the paper say? Yeah? And what does the paper say that you did? You sold property? Well, we're not going to sue the, the, the doggone company. We're going to sue the title company. The title company, right? <laughs> the title company is the one that sold the thing, right? They got the title insurance. And they think we're going to sue the, 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 this company. And no, we're going to sue the title company. What about the doggone accounts? Accounts. Well, what are you doing? The court just said that you was, you was, you was just wrong. What are, what are you talking about? Right? They can't do nothing uh, with us. <laughs> right? They can't do nothing with us. What we're trying to do is say, who cares about all of that stuff? Who cares about focusing, you know, focus on that old time stuff? Yeah, you're going to play around with it, but that's not your focus. Your focus is not acquiring a little property here and there. Your focus is doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do. And dear believers, that stuff is big now. That stuff is big now. In, in closing, I don't know about you, but I ain't blowing my shot. I don't care what it don't make look. I can't, I'm not blowing it. I'm just not gonna blow it, that's all. I'm not gonna say, I wish I would have did this. I'm not going to say that. I, I'm not going to say I wish I would have did that. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to say I could have been a contender. You know, for the championship. So I'm not going to say that. Whatever it is I'm going to be, that's what I'm going to be. That's what knocking the nigga upside the head did. It straightened the whole show out. <laughs> That's what it did. Yeah, it, it straightened the whole show out. You can think what you want, but I'm trying to tell you that's what happened. That's the way it happened. So now, Snap my finger and you now forgot because you was hypnotized. I wasn't hypnotized. You don't remember. <laughs> now if you want to stop smoking, you want to lose weight, that they hypnotize you. That's what the So dear believers, forget about everything that I've said. It's just uh, hypnotism. Voila. We seek thy refuge from anxiety and grief. Lack of strength and laziness, cowardice and niggardliness. We seek thy refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O oh Allah, suffice us with what is lawful, keep from us what is prohibited. With thy grace, make us free from want of what is besides. Amen. Amen. The